Good day, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I You see, now that you are born again, I would advise you to depart from all those things you were doing before so that you can have a good relationship with God and so that your relationship with God can bear fruit. I've heard you, Pastor. I'll do exactly as you say. Okay, then. I'll keep on praying for you. You know, it's all about heavenly race. It's not always easy. It's only those that persevere to the end who have access to the crown. So I encourage you to be strong, always be steadfast, no matter the challenges you will face in this life, just know that there is somewhere better than what you are passing through. By God's grace, everything will be fine. It's cute, right? You can put it on tonight. Hmm. What for? I can't put that on again. It's too short for me. Since I gave my life to Christ, I've decided not to wear it again. It's too short for me. Besides, I was even thinking to burn it down. All my dresses. Uh, anyway, okay. Since as you are serious in burning, don't burn them. Mm? Just gather them and give me. Uh, since you say you don't want to wear them now, can I demand give me? <laughs> Girl, I'm sorry, I can't give it to you. I won't be trying to get out of something and I'm encouraging you to do it. I can't. Alright, don't just sis. I want to dress up and go and see my boyfriend. I just want to tell you that I love you. Jesus got a song that I see. My coming here. I would have called you, but I say, let me come and remind you for the yearly tradition. You know, it will be coming up in a month's time. So I've come to tell you that prepare yourself. This time around, I will accompany you to the village for the tradition. Mom, I'm sorry I won't travel with you to the village, Mom. I've given my life to Christ. You know, the Bible does not permit us to carry out these fetish beliefs, Mom. Leave it like that. You are my daughter. You are a wise girl. I know that the people outside here cannot deceive you with that Christianity. Tradition is good. Just look at you. Look at me. 
Am I not doing fine? Mom, I'm sorry, I won't be able to go with you. I've <laughs> given my life to Christ. I'm in Tungo Wao Nongo, Nende. I have not come to plead with you. I am not here to debate with you whether you will be going to the village or not. I have come to remind you and I've come to tell you to prepare yourself. By moon end, we are going to the village for the tradition rites. You can't just change overnight. Because as I'm talking to you, trying to convince you, it is not even a matter of convincing somebody. Tradition that brought you up to today. You are here telling me that uh, uh, Christianity, uh, so you have given your life to Christ. Your life was with who first? Where is the Christ? Where is the Christ that you have given your life to? Look, I have not come to ask you whether you will be going to the village by the moon end. I've come to tell you that moon end, we are traveling to the village for tradition. Mom, I'm sorry, I won't go with you. I cannot abandon my ancestors and the tradition of my village because of Christ say, Christ no say, Christ come, Christ no come. Take note. So, Sister Mabel. Yes, Pastor. Tell me, how have you been? I hope all is well, because your face is not bright. Any problem? I'm not fine, Pastor. I have something to discuss with you. Okay, go on, Daughter of Zion. Can you believe my mom came to my house the other day, trying to force me to go to the village and perform one traditional rite that we have been that we have been performing in the past years, Pastor. She has been forcing me to go to the village, but I'm now a child of God. I don't think I can go to the village to perform it again. I've given my life to Christ. Very good then. You see, my dear, you are now a child of God. And that's all that matters. Okay? Yes, Pastor. Don't allow anybody to deceive you. As you have chosen to make it or go a long way with the Lord. Stand still. Be immovable. Remember, he that is in Christ is a new creature. All things, including that tradition, has passed away. All things have become new. So you are in Christ. You are a new creature. Don't allow anything to separate you from the love of God. You know our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our mother, he was tempted all around. But he did not give up. So he is our model. He knows that we will be we will face the same challenges. That's how we, he said you should cheer up because he has overcome. You have no relationship again with them. No matter who, don't allow them to separate you from the love of God. You have to do away with everything that consigns tradition and focus on the Lord so that you'll be able to stand even at the end. You know you have a crown to receive, right? Yes, Pastor. So I encourage you. I still encourage you. Be strong. Be immovable. Nothing to shake your faith. Yes, difficult time will come. And maybe this is your own trial. And if you are able to overcome this stand, I bet you, you see what the Lord is going to do in your life. The Lord wants to do great things with you. Okay? Yes, so Pastor. allow God to perform all his mindset and purpose for your life. Are you getting me? Yes, Pastor. Okay. Lose your hand, let me Thank you very much. You are welcome. <laughs> sleeping. I'm troubled. What's wrong? Can you believe my mom came here a few days back trying to remind me of one traditional rite and I have to perform in the village? Um, what's wrong with that? Babe, I'm a child of God. You don't expect me to go to the village and perform a traditional rite. Come on. Can't 
just forget about church, church, church thing. Crying out loud. These rights you are talking about have been protecting you since the day you were born. And now you are here telling me you are a child of God. My sister, the only thing I can tell you is that you should go to the village and perform those rites before the ancestors strike you. <laughs> do you want to stay here and die? Or do you want to receive curses? I don't just know what to do. I can't go to the village and perform those rites. Those rites, your forefathers have been honoring it. It's not you that have to change it though. Go before they lay curses on you. That's my own advice for you. If you like, you stay there, carry church and put on your head and die here. Even before I came forth from my mother's womb, knew me by my name. Yahweh, you knew me by my name. So tell me, Sister Mabel, you look so disturbed. What is really bothering you? Yes, Pastor, for some days now I've not been myself. How do you mean, Daughter of Zion? Pastor, you know, all this while I've been disturbed. I don't know if I'm going to survive this. Please, Daughter of Zion, how do you mean? Pastor, nothing is moving. Everything is elder scatter. Nothing is moving. I don't just know what to do again. Maybe be what is wrong, what is wrong? Oh, my father, my God. Oh, oh. Sister Mabel. Yes, Pastor. I can remember you told me something last time you came to my office about your mom visiting you yeah, for Pastor. a traditional rite, right? So tell me, did you finally go to the village for the traditional rite? Yes, Pastor, I did. Oh, my God. You see, Sister Mapel, no wonder you have disobeyed the Lord. And maybe this is your price for disobedience. When you receive a command from the Lord, make sure you do exactly what the Lord asks you to do. The same thing happened to Saul in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15. The Lord asked Saul to go and destroy the Amalekites without sparing anything. But what did he do? He went there, destroyed some, and spared some, even Hagar, for himself, the fat animals. Meanwhile, he was asked to destroy all. But as you have repented, yes, doing away with sin is not enough. Little, little fall, the Bible called them foxes. And if you are not careful, they will put you down and see where you are right now. You are suffering because you brought it upon yourself. How could you, Sister Mabel? Even in this church, if there is somebody that will do this, no, I will not think you are the one. But anyway, the Lord we serve is a merciful God. The problem is not falling. The problem is recognizing where you fell and then rise up and start the work. You know, the Christian work is not easy. So, be careful next time. The Lord said a contrite heart, he will never forsake him. So all you need to do is go back to God with sincerity and with a broken heart. I believe the Lord will forgive you because our God is a merciful God. Okay, Pastor. Thank you. You are welcome. In the year 587 BC, the city of Jerusalem was attacked by the Babylonian Empire. And a year later, the city and the temple were plundered and burned. Thousands of Israelites were taken from their homes and relocated all over ancient Babylon. They became exiles. And so now they're a minority surrounded by a new culture with new gods. 
Now, some Israelites chose to resist Babylon by revolting or withdrawing. Others gave in, adopting the Babylonian way of life and accepting these new gods as their own. And you might think those are your only two options, but the prophet Jeremiah told them to do something totally different and surprising. To settle in, build houses, plant gardens, grow families, and most surprisingly, to seek the well-being of Babylon and pray to the Lord on its behalf. So this is like a third way. Yeah, it's not compromise or revolt. What does it look like? Well, there's a whole book of the Bible that explores that question. It's the story of Daniel. Daniel was one of the Israelites taken into the Babylonian exile. And because Daniel had a royal heritage and education, he was recruited along with some friends to work in the high court of Babylon. Work for the enemy? That would be compromise. Or they could gain the king's trust, take him down from the inside. That's what you might expect. But instead, they take Jeremiah's advice and choose the third way. They serve the king of Babylon, taking on Babylonian names and even clothing style. So they seek Babylon's well-being, but in doing so, aren't they just giving up their heritage? It could seem that way, but actually they aren't. As you read on, the story focuses on moments where they draw the line and they choose faithfulness to their God and resist the influence of Babylon. So for example? Well, like when they're commanded to bow down to the idol of Babylon and give allegiance to the king as if he's a God. Ah, uh, they won't go that far. Right, this is where you see their true loyalty. It requires them to critique Babylon's idolatry of power, its arrogance, its injustice, but they do it non-violently by laying down their lives. And so God vindicates Daniel and his friends for their faithfulness. So they would serve Babylon, seek its well-being, but their loyalty was always to God. Yeah, this is what Jeremiah was envisioning. The way of the exile is a combination of loyalty and also subversion. So they're still exiles, but don't Daniel and his friends long to go home? Yes. In fact, Daniel believed that God was going to send a ruler to bring down Babylon and create a true kingdom of peace. Ah, when did he think this ruler would come? Well, at first he thought within his lifetime, but then he had a dream where he found out that after Babylon would come another oppressive empire, then another, then another. And so Babylon did fall and Israel did get to go back home, but now they're ruled by Babylon's successors. And so they maintained the mindset of an exile waiting for their true home to come to them. And they continued the same practice of loyalty and subversion to any new versions of Babylon that came along. And this leads us to the time of Jesus. The empire of his day was Rome, ruled by Caesar. Now, some Israelites wanted to resist, while others gave in and adopted Roman culture and its gods. But watch Jesus carry on the subversive loyalty of Daniel. Like when he said, it's fine to pay taxes to Caesar, give him back his coins. But then he said, don't mistake Caesar for God. God's the one who deserves your total life and allegiance. So the way of Jesus is this same mix of loyalty and subversion. Yeah, like he taught his followers to love and even bless their enemies. But he also got arrested for speaking out against the corrupt leaders of Jerusalem and Rome. He critiqued their idolatry of power and it cost him his life. But God vindicated him by raising him from the dead as the true king of the nations. The king that Daniel had hoped for. Right. And Jesus promised that one day his kingdom would prevail. And so until then, his followers are living in a type of exile. Yeah, this is why the Apostle Peter calls followers of Jesus foreigners and exiles. He told them to respect the authorities of whatever place you happen to live, to honor and love all people. But then he reminds them that this isn't their true home. They're still living in Babylon. But well, they're not living in Babylon. Babylon doesn't exist anymore. Or does it? In the Bible, Babylon has become a symbol that describes any human institution that demands allegiance to its idolatrous redefinitions of good and evil. Okay, so we all live and work in Babylon. How do I seek the well-being of Babylon while my allegiance is to someone greater? Yes, Jesus' followers are called to live in that tension between loyalty and subversion. That's the way of the exile.
of a rushing mighty wind. I hear the sound of a rushing mighty wind. Oh, I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost coming in. When the Lord comes, it doesn't matter where you're from. It depends on where you're going. I was going to heaven. How about you? All right. Uh, let me just say, now, there's times to change. Uh, my last name is Watson, and uh, uh, that's all I'm going to say. All right. I'm going to play uh, 
Great is our favorite. How many know we serve a great God? He is a great God, isn't he? All right, pray for me, please.